Hello and welcome to another Classic Restos. This time I have travelled to Portland in Victoria. Well, it's been 12 months since I've been here and it was easy to return when I was invited back. The coastal town here of Portland offers just so much. Set in a beautiful backdrop of greenery, iconic old buildings and the fresh air right here by the sea. And taking advantage of such a location is this. Welcome to the Portland Classics by the Bay show and shine. That's not in it, is it? Portland, Victoria, Australia is in fact the oldest European settlement in the state and is located on Portland Bay. This beautiful coastal town was established in 1834 and is located 360 kilometres west of Melbourne, home to just over 10,000 people. The bay was named in 1800 by the British navigator James Grant, who sailed in the Lady Nelson along the Victorian coast he wrote back to the old country stating how nice the place was, then more poms arrived, next thing the place was filling up, hence where we are all today. By the early 19th century, whalers and sealers were working the treacherous waters of Bass Strait, and Portland Bay provided good shelter and fresh water which enabled them to establish the first white settlement in the area. Of course, there's a lot more to Portland than what I can mention about here. But now, it's time for the people. The ones that have travelled a long way, the ones from just a few streets away, and all places in between. These are their classic car stories. Well, here we are in gorgeous Portland. How are you doing, Merv? Not too bad, thanks, Rich. That's the way, mate. Thanks for bringing the van along. That's all right. No worries. Now, you know, the Chrysler fraternity, uh, the Mopar thing is big. I mean, there's a lot of people that admire them. Uh, now, these drifter vans, there's there's not a lot left. I mean, they went bang on up against the Sandman back in the day with the Holden. Uh, Ford had their panel van as well. Now, this drifter, I just was never aware that there were so many combinations when you ordered one. Yeah, there was some... Um Six cylinder autos, six cylinder four speeds, V8 autos, V8 four speeds, and in three different colours the yellow, the orange, and the white as you see behind us. And yeah, and there's only 338 of them ever produced. Well, the graphics is what gets me. Now, Merv here has an original brochure that came with the car back in 1977. It's a, a lift out folder where you can pick your combinations of uh, what style you wanted on your van. I mean, it's so far removed, Merv, from today. There's even pictures there of tin snips and cutting a hole in the side showing you to in how to install a window. Yes, that's right. It's, they bought, Chrysler bought them out when they bought the vans out as an information pack for owners to buy the booklet which only cost a dollar and it's very informal. <laughs> the stuff you keep on learning in this game is just unbelievable. Okay now it's time for the tug on the heartstrings part of the interview Merv. The history of the car, how long you've had it, where you found it, what can you tell us about that? Um, I had it 34 years and it came out of Melbourne. It was owned by I'm not real certain who owned it before my, me owned it, but 34 years ago I got it in the condition it is now and it's never been restored and it's still mostly original. I'll tell you what, you've taken good care of it. Oh, it spends most of the time in, either in my garage at home or down at the Portland Finnish Museum, the Powerhouse Museum in Portland. Wow. I mean, we look in the back, I mean, look at that shag. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, and I mean the carpet. It's, yeah, it's a beautiful car to sleep in. It's mm. got mattress and everything else and I can stretch right out. It's a lot longer in the back than the Holdens were and the Fords were. Yeah. This van's pretty rare. It's one of nine produced with the 318 V8 T-Bar Auto, which most of your V8s were all four-speed and most of your six-cylinders were four-speed. Um, there's only about 14 autos in the six-cylinders and most of them were the four-speed manual boxes. And this one's done 190 odd thousand, it's still going strong for a V8. Yeah. Yep. Merv, thanks very much for coming along and bringing your, your drifter van. I mean, what a backdrop here in Portland. I mean, um, Craig Dennett and his team did a fantastic job putting this event together. It went off last year and uh, this year as well. It's all coming together and uh, what a spot. Beautiful spot. You can get a better place to live and a better yeah. place to view. Yeah. 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 Good on you, Merv. You have a great day, buddy. No worries. Thanks, Fetch. 
from a Mopar to a Ford, we have a glorious 1974 XB two-door, and we got Pete. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing well, Fletch. How are you doing? Good, mate. Good. Thanks for bringing the coupe along. Ah, oh, that's fine. It's a pleasure. What a sensational shape of a Ford these things are. They uh, hark back to that sort of Torino Mustangy Coke bottle look, I think, yeah. Fletch. Beautiful shape. I like to see where the models have derived, where they've come from. Uh, the Holden in the 70s, based on the Pontiac from the United States, these big coupes, Torino from the United States, you can see where they've got their body styles and some of their shapes from. I think these coupes are very well proportioned, like compared to a Torino. I, I think you're right, Fletch. It's, uh, it's a gorgeous shape, and look, they look good sitting in a shed under a car cover. They're... Uh, <laughs> I, I'm biased. I've owned a couple of these in my lifetime. I've been fortunate enough to, and they're, they're just, I think, they're the sexiest body shape ever brought in this country. Well, I try and find another word apart from fat, but, I mean, I describe these as a fat-bodied car. They look tough. They're mean. They really look the goods. And you can't stop thinking about the guys that used to race these uh, big cars um, around racetracks, such as, well the iconic Bathurst. Um, these cars really were very, very symbolic for Ford. They really had some great runs on the board, didn't they? I think they uh, they were our iconic, if you're a Ford person, they were our iconic race car for, you know, for six or seven years and, and such a, a great looking car, I think, in race trim. Big wheels on them and, and big spoilers on them and, and big horsepower under the bonnet, Fletch. Sure. Those, those old Clevelands used to make a lot of ground. Engine up front. Now, uh, Australian Cleveland with this model, Pete? This is one of the early Australian Clevelands. Yeah, 74, they, they changed over from the American engines. So this was one of the early produced uh, Australian engines. So 351, 4V. So 4V heads. I think when the first uh, wraparound dash came out in the XA, I mean, the cockpit styling, I mean, no other car had that. And uh, the high back bucket seats, um, when you sat in them, they, they bolstered fairly well. Uh, being a two-door car, too, monstrous in length, the, the door on each side, I mean, there was nothing else like them. Not a, another thing like them, Fletch, and, uh, and unfortunately if they were on standard 7-inch wheels, uh, the poor old back tyres looked like you had a pair of razor blades on there, so they, they do benefit from a little bit more rubber under the back of them, which most blokes do these days. That's right, it's almost uh, as though they were tubbed from the factory. Uh, oh, I think the race teams, from what I gather, the race teams had a pretty late input into the size of those guards. They, uh, they were originally going to be a lot flatter guard and the, the race teams all got to Ford and said, hey, can you flare these things? We really want to put some rubber under the back of them. Now, Pete, we look at the car. To me, it, it's had, a, would it be safe to say, a partial restoration some time ago? It's had a freshen up in its life. Uh, it's, look, it's basically a very original car, Fletch. Um, it was originally a Queensland car and it had, it had a, um, a closed door respray during its life. So that's, that's pretty much all it's had. It's had a couple of little things inside. It's had the seats recovered. Yeah. Um, but other than that, basically very original. Other than, look, the few mods on it that I believe it would have had in the 70s anyway. Mm. So it's yeah, basically a very original, genuine car. Pete, I better go. Uh, this is going to turn into the Pete half hour if we don't move on, mate. Thank you very much for coming along. Uh, look, I love the XB. It's, uh, what, what do we say? We, uh, yeah, you could talk all day about it, mate. Thank you very much, eh? Thanks for turning up and look, thanks for supporting the show. The, the boys really appreciate it. We've got a great car culture in this country, yep. in this town. Yep. Thanks for turning up. That's right. You're welcome, Pete. Thanks, mate. Cheers. Every year, this sensational little car show develops here at Portland. And uh, the reason it does that, this guy here. Craig, how you doing, buddy? Fantastic, Fletch. That's the way, mate. Now, you've been working flat out for another big year here, haven't you? Oh, we have, mate. And yeah, it's. it's it's uh, going to be a great show today. Yeah, good on you, mate. Well, uh, you've still got a bit of energy left in you. You can't be exhausted just yet. <laughs> no, I, uh, the week's, the week's uh, got to me, but uh, it's going good, mate. OK, mate. Now, 2017, now, what can we expect to see here today? Uh, look, look, this show this today, even even with our weather, the way it's looking like coming in, um, it's it's looking to be a fantastic week. We'll be over the cars we had last year. Yeah. So. Mate, you'd have to have one of the prettiest venues, I think, uh, in Victoria. Oh, look. You can't go wrong here, can you? Hey, what a what a backdrop, mm. beautiful spot. Yep. Um, so yeah, it's great. Good on you, mate. Now, how many uh, in terms of numbers uh, we're up on last year? Yeah, I reckon we're about uh, 20, 25, 30 cars over yep. expecting from what we had got last year. So yep. fantastic. I mean, when you stop and think about, it, even if five roll in more than last year, it's it's always moving in the right direction, isn't it? Oh, for sure, mate. This this our show in the four years has just kept growing each year. And it's just getting bigger and bigger. Yep. Okay, now tell us quickly about your uh, your car club here in Portland. Yeah, um, we're just a local little club, you know, 80 odd members, and uh, started five years ago in May. So uh, yeah, it just keeps keeps a little little tight knit club. 
but we um, we love sharing it out to everyone like today. Okay, well, Portland Classic Car Club, easy to find. Uh, it's all on social media these days, Facebook. I mean, everyone's easy to find. Yeah, so. get, yeah just get on there and have a look. Good on you, Craig. Well, I really appreciate the effort that yourself and, and Renee and the team have put in here. Uh, like I say, we've got a, a great venue, the variety of cars. Uh, you know, we've got British cars, American cars, our Aussie-made cars. I mean, uh, right across the board, they're here. Yeah, oh, for sure, mate. They just all roll up. It's great, and that's what it's about. It's, yep. It doesn't matter what you got. Yeah, absolutely. It's good to see this mob behind us. They turned up again. Oh, mate, Shannon's they're, they're always on board with us. <laughs> uh, so it's fantastic. Yeah, they are. All right, Craig, let you get back to it, mate. Have a great right, day, thanks. eh? Thanks for coming, mate, and we'll see you again next year. That's right. Thank you, and uh, yeah, thank you for having me back. Ah, oh, mate, you're more than welcome anytime. Yeah. All right, well, I've got to get to work. Yeah, you better go. See you, mate. Thanks, Fletch. Thanks for coming. You're right, mate. You are watching Portland Classics by the Bay Show and Shine, and you're seeing it first on Classic Restos. Back with more right after this. Making our way through these motoring iconics. Time for Dave. How are you, mate? Yeah, good, Fletch. How are you? Good, mate. Good. I love this. I love this 1961 Bel Air you've got here. Yeah, this uh, Bel Air belongs to my uncle. Um, who's not with us anymore, but we thought we'd bring it down and show it off. I love every angle that you look at these early chevs. I've got a, a big soft spot for the chevs. They just look superb from no matter where you stand. I mean, look around the back screen. It's got its own little awning from the roof turret covering the rear screen. I mean, what, what character there? I mean, the little tail lights pointing out of the back there. And to think these big cars, I used to NASCAR race these things. I mean, you think of how versatile these big cars were back in their time. Now they're just, you know, classic pieces of jewellery sitting on a paddock like this here today. Um, wow, what history. Yeah, that's a classic, and it? it's hard to imagine going around a racetrack that quick. And Now, Dave, the colour of the car, the, uh, the salmon colour on the outside, if you would say salmon, you've got the interior contrasting nice as well. I think your uncle did a fantastic job here uh, with that scheme. Yeah, it looks great. Like the colour is fantastic. Um, it's a different colour, obviously, but it, it does suit the area of the car. Um, my uncle was an upholsterer, so he's done or redone all the interior. Um, looks really good with that colour. And, and Dave, steering wheels on the right-hand side. What's the story there? Well, from what I'm led to believe is that car came out of factory in, in Adelaide when it was manufactured, and it was an original right-hand drive Chev. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez. And to think too, back in 1961 here in Australia, I mean, if you drove one of these cars brand new, well, you were doing very, very well for yourself. Yeah, it would have been a good cruiser at the time, wouldn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. All right, can you tell us about the engine up front? What's going on there, Dave? Uh, it's just got standard 283 with matching numbers, matching numbers engine still. Yep. Um, yeah, it's just everything still all original under the bonnet. And, yep. um, it's just got a uh, power glide gearbox behind it. Yep. Um, just nothing, all pretty standard. Nothing wrong with those, the old two-speed power guides. I mean, what a, what a transmission they were. Yeah, well, it's put, you know, stand, stood the test of time, so. Yeah. All right, well, Dave, I think it's wonderful that you've brought the car here in tribute to your uncle, and it's just so nice that before he passed that he did get to see the car finished, and uh, you're carrying on the tradition, mate, so well done, yeah, and uh, look after it. Well, the, the car shortly will be probably going to Shannon's auctions um, to shift some of his stuff, so... Um, that'll be up up the track somewhere. So yeah, well, if yeah. you've got to go to an auction, that's uh, that's where you've got to go to. So keep an eye out for this one because whoever buys this car, take it from me, is going to get a real gem. It's a it's a beautiful thing. Thanks again, Dave. Great. Thanks, Fletch. Beautiful. On the job, classic restos, no catering. Got to look after yourself. This is where your knowledge cuts in. This here is the Portland Coffee Tree, and the reason it's called the Coffee Tree is because you get bloody coffee out of it. Time now for a Big Bad HQ on today's show. Hello, Glenn. How you going, Fletch? How are you, mate? Yeah, good, thanks, buddy. Yourself? Good, good, good. Right. Are, you, are you enjoying the day? Absolutely. If the rain, it keep it away a bit, mate. It yeah. comes and goes, so we enjoy the sunshine when it comes through. Now, moving right along, it didn't stop you bringing out the gorgeous HQ who we've got here in front of us. 1972, uh, obviously the HQ being the longest production run in any Holden that's ever been made. Yep, correct. Yeah, it's 72 model, uh, the SS. They built them before the Monaros to give them a test run, and they come up really well, so they went on with the Monaros. So, yeah. I mean, uh, what a nice car. Beautiful. I Good mean, to drive, Fletch. Nice. Nice features too, uh, depicting the era as well. I mean, we've got our the houndstooth interior, uh, the fish scale dash. Uh, you've got a four-speed going on there. Um, and the paint scheme is absolutely beautiful here in the rain, the way the water is beating on the paintwork, it just really sets it off. Yeah, it's magnificent. I'm quite happy with it, actually. They look, always look good in the rain, but it is good when it's not wet, Fletch. So what's, uh, what's the deal with you, Glenn? How long have you had this for? Uh, I bought it back in about... 2007, it was coming out of Barco in New South Wales, and uh, 
we restored it completely, upside down, rotisserie and everything, and it was all a totally original car when we got it, all matching numbered yep. engine and everything. So, yeah, it's come up well. So you, you painted same colour? Same colour. Everything's gone back to original. We yep. changed the revision mirrors on it to a Monaro. Uh, the grill's been painted differently just to lift it up a little bit, yeah. Do you remember being a little kid back in school and seeing a HQ? Yeah, we owned one. So um, it was only a station wagon, but it wasn't too bad, and um, I loved all the all the sedans too. Yeah. So I think that's where that's where the bug starts biting. I think we get to a, a stage of our lives, we have a car, or we admire a car that we can remember once upon a time when we were little. And um, yeah, I, I don't know what more you can say about that. There's a lot of meaning in that. Yeah. Well, um, in saying that, my children are only young too and they just love the cars so yeah they'll always they'll always think of them when they get older and yeah they love coming in them. Just one last thing I need to ask you Glenn in terms of before you bought the car do you know anything about the history about the original owner? No I don't I bought it off um but it had a few owners before I got hold of it was an Adelaide built car coming out of Sydney or Wilbarco and no I haven't chased up any of the real history on it uh, to know what's going on Fletch so yeah. I probably should do one day but oh, yes well. think well I've got it on the road it's mine and I'm happy. So. Beautiful car mate. Uh, 1972 HQ SS, beautiful car, mate, and uh, thanks for coming here today. Good on you, Fletch. All right. Thanks, buddy. We'll catch up. That's right. You got to keep the dream alive with this stuff. I know. I'm doing that too. Good on you, mate. Thanks, matey. See you for now. Thank you. We look up pretty in the dictionary, and we've got a picture of this car. Welcome to the show, Steve. Thanks a lot, Fletch. Um, beautiful AP5. What an incredible car. Yeah, very good. Um, bought the car in 2012. Uh, found it in Adelaide and uh, had the usual problems, took it home and uh, pulled it apart and yeah. restored it. Mate, what a beautiful example of a 1965 Valiant. Uh, it also hosts the 273 V8. It does, um, and also number 13 off the assembly line, wow. which was I uh, didn't know when I bought the vehicle yeah. until I uh, got it home and started um, stripping it down. Now Steve, uh, the legendary Valiant's built in Tonsley Park there in Adelaide. Uh, you mentioned Adelaide, was it far from there by chance? No, it wasn't that far at all. Um, I found it by sheer accident. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, guy was advertising parts for sale mm. and I went there to buy some parts and uh, there it was in the back of the shed. How good is the black and the red interior? That, that, is, that to me, that, that's divine. Well that's original, the colour and uh, so is the interior, so uh, that's how I found the vehicle, mm. with the black vinyl roof. Yep. Um, a lot of them when they were built, they were white with the black vinyl yes, roof. Yes, they were. So, um, and how was the old girl when you did find it? Was it fairly dilapidated or pretty well uh, in intact? It had the usual uh, rust in the rear quarters. Um, that was probably the worst of it all. Uh, had to do a bit of work in the planetary chamber. Yep. Um, I rebuilt the motor. The engine bay was pretty greasy and oily, and yeah. uh, it was on gas, and it had s stuff everywhere. So it, it's allowed to. I mean, that's uh, it comes with the age of the car. You've given it a, a new lease of life here. Um, the 273, like all the Chrysler small block V8s, they they were virtually unbreakable. You had to do something pretty dumb to break one. Um, so you've got a you've got a beautiful uh, V8 engine there. Uh, you would also have the 904 transmission, which is a which is a, a great drive line as well. Um, mate, what a package! Yeah, it is. Um, the 904 still co cable operated. Yep. That's how you pick these uh, vehicles with the floor shift, yep. which is fairly unique. Um, a lot of people don't know a lot about them, but uh, yeah, that's that's how they came, and yeah. they were fairly fairly good. Yeah, they're one of the smoothest changing transmissions in the business. The little 904, they're a, a great little box. Now, in terms of build time, Steve, uh, how long did it take you? Uh, about five and a half years. Um, I started. And then I got a bit lazy on it because, uh, you know, I work for myself and I sort of run out a bit of time. And then I got the urge a couple of years later and got stuck into it and um, got it finished two days before the uh, Chrysler Nationals at Cowra. I got a comment on the, on the dashboard, Steve. The, the dash has come up incredibly well. Yeah, I redid that. I, um, well, you know, I pulled the whole car down. Um, I took everything out. I repainted the dash. I sent the uh, instrument cluster away, had it redone, yep. and I was really happy when yeah. it came back. I yes. was 
really pleased. I've done that with all my cars, sent the gauges away and look, you know, most of the time they didn't need doing but it's peace of mind, you know, they're calibrated and, and they work and uh, yeah, it just gives you that little bit more accuracy. You could technically talk for a long time about this car. Uh, it's not every day of the week that you see an AP5, especially uh, in this condition. Being the V8 and being uh, the Fairmont, so to speak, of, yeah, of, of that yeah. genre of car. Thanks again for coming along, Steve. Uh, yeah, thanks very much, Fletch. You're welcome. Yeah, been a pleasure. Thanks, mate. Well, that wraps up this week's episode of Classic Restos. Just a sample of the incredible 2017 Portland Classics by the Bay Show and Shine. Try and get to Portland in 2018. They're easy to find on Facebook. The venue speaks for itself and it's an incredible car show to go along with it. As I say at the end of every show, no matter where you're watching Classic Restos from, until next week, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch and I thank you very much for watching. You can like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash classic restos TV and watch catch up episodes at shannons.com.au.